Welcome to my YouTube channel which is titled Research Methods Class with Dr. Lydia Wabugo. In Research Methods, we have a book titled Research Methods, Theory and Practice. This book is accessible through the website where you can access the hard copy of the book or a downloadable PDF format of the book. In the same website, you are able to access all the courses which includes the free research methods course, IBM SPSS statistics course, M&E consultancy course which are available at a fee. Please find the links in the description. Welcome. Hello and welcome to our lesson 78 and this is a continuation of the guidelines that have been set by APA 7th edition that we started using from the year 2020. So in our previous lesson, we have discussed how we format the preliminary pages of our thesis, uh, dissertations and projects. This lesson is going to discuss how we format the main body or the main text of our thesis, dissertation and, and project. So we only have one objective and this lesson and the next one will be a, a, a discussion of how we format the main text. So we will break it into two so that we can look at section one and then section two. So like we have said previously, when we talk about the main text or the main body, we are looking at chapter 1 to chapter 5, which is what is composed in theses and dissertations in most institutions. And again, we need to repeat and say that APA uh, 7th edition should be applied across the whole document. From the way you set the margin, from the pagination, from the way you use the font size and style, it should be used across the whole document. So now we have left the preliminary pages. Now we are in the main document. We start with the font size and the font styles that are required. Lesson 74 discussed the acceptable font size and font styles that are now uh, used in APA as we use APA 7th edition. But it is important to remember that our minimum is 10 point and our maximum is 14 point. And please do not mix the two. Do not have sections with 10 point and other sections with 14 or a section with Times New Roman and another one with Georgia. Then there should be consistency. There is an allowance for tables and figures where you can use a smaller font especially where you have tables that have so much information that may not fit in the space that you wanted the table to fit in. So you may use a smaller font than 10 for only tables and figures. So note that there should be consistency across the document. When we use bold, bolding is only allowed in headings, in table and figure numbers, and in the appendices. However, these bolded headings should not be underlined and should not be italicized. The only exception for underlining is made for appendices. You are allowed to underline appendices. We are not allowed to use italics, but we, can, we only use it when we are referring to the title of the book in the reference list, like we discussed in lesson 75, and also to refer to a new terminology within the text. Those are the only two areas when we use uh, italics in the text. But we, well, like we will see, when we are referring to uh, the table number, we use italics. So we have discussed how to reference books and journals in lesson 75. So if you have forgotten, please refer to that lesson. Spacing. The whole document should be double spaced between all lines. Single spacing can be used for table titles, figure captions, and references. We had mentioned this earlier, that when you are referencing from one reference to the other, you should use double spacing. But for one reference, then you can use single spacing. Single spacing is also allowed when you have block quotations. So you may use double or you may use single spacing. APA requires one space at the end of a sentence, and then you use 
periods when abbreviating a name for instance like what is shown but do not use the periods with acronyms for instance you cannot put a dot with a space p with a dot space a that that is an acronym apa or unesco or phd so for 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 acronyms you do not use periods but for names you use periods like it is shown hanging headings and white space avoid hanging headings or heading titles having a title let's assume you have a title 2.1 literature review then you have 2.11 immediately maybe uh, uh, introduction to sustainability when you write 2.1 literature review have an opening statement to describe what will follow so do not have hanging headings and you should also make sure that you avoid white spaces white spaces occur especially where you have tables and figures that are not close to the text so you have a text at this point and the table is starting at a point so this space here is what is called the white text so make sure that you avoid hanging headings and ensure the tables and figures are as close to the text as possible to eliminate the white spaces. And then orphans and widows. Again, these are two that should be avoided. Now, orphans are the first line of a paragraph at the bottom of the page, while widows is a single line adding a paragraph at the end of a page. And these are things that we find ourselves sometimes doing. You have written... Uh, uh, your text then you get to almost the end of the page and you write literature review and then the starting of the of the of this section of literature review comes in the next page this is what we call orphans and widows and they should be avoided numbers and numerals we have mentioned this that you use numerals to express numbers that are more than 10 and the ones that are less than 10 should be written in words when you want to make a number a plural, just add S and do not add an apostrophe. For example, 1980s are not 1980 with an apostrophe and an S. Margins and alignment. Margins should be one inch on all sides and the text is set to align left. Meaning, the right margins should not be justified. Do not justify your text. They should be aligned uh, uh, left and the right margins should not be justified. However, there are some institutions that will have variations with the top, bottom and right. So, if you have been given uh, other margin uh, other margins by your institution that you for you should follow what your institution has given you but for the left the left must consistently remain at one inch and that brings us to the end of our lesson we have looked at some of the uh, areas that you need to consider when you are formatting your thesis or your dissertation in our next lesson, which will be a continuation of what we have done, we will look at other areas that you need to be keen on as you format your thesis. Thank you for being part of this class. Do not forget to subscribe to this channel and please share and like this lesson and feel free to put any question on the comment section.